this summer, Mike likes machine guns. I like machine guns. Welcome to episode 18. We have Aaron from Cobalt Kinetics. I'd just like to say first, I can't believe that we've made it this far. What do you think we are, listener count, Rich? Um, Deep in the 50s, right? Yeah. 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 We, uh, I'm, each episode I've been watching and we'll have our listeners comment in the YouTube thread. And throw out their number. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. (laughs) Listener 10. Don't think that it's a waste of time then that no one will hear it, Aaron, because, well, that probably is a waste of time, but don't act like that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> 50 listeners, but they're very loyal. So you'll have 50 new customers that will purchase your Potential rifles. new customers. Potentials, yeah. 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 I, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good with 50. I think 50 is kind of my max, so. Let's talk about your rifles and kind of overall situation where you guys are going where you've been how you got involved what drew you into this little that, firearms business that that's uh it's an interesting story um i mean interesting to me it may not be for oh no else. it'll be int- i'm i'm interested <laughs> yeah well um i spent the last 10 years in pharmaceuticals um Anywhere from the consulting side to uh, the, the last couple years of, of my time there uh, uh, in a wholesale distribution company. Um, and March of 2020, I was just hating life, hating, hating that industry and talked to my dad and said, uh, I, I got to do something else. I got to get out of here. Okay. Just to put this in simpler terms. You were in the drug business. Yes. And you hit rock bottom (laughs) and made a change. Is that? Yes. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's a good translation, right? For sure. I was talking to someone the other day and they said, man, I wish I met you three years ago. And I said, well, if if we had, I'd I'd have been trying to sell you drugs. So um, it's it's an an interesting transition for sure. So you still have connections in that world? Yes. 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 We'll have to talk about that after the podcast. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Drugs are bad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Legal. But, but ones, relevant. Obviously, yeah. Relevant, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, I, I, had had, I had an FFL just because f- I like guns, and um, it was easier to get suppressors that way, things like that. Smart. Yeah. Like at your home? Um, no, it was, it was at a little, little warehouse, little shop we had. Um, oh, so you dabbled in it? Just well, I may have sold five guns just to f- friends and kinda stuff. Getting your feet wet? Yeah, just 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 kind of jumping in, in in that side. Um, and we had been working on uh, the purchase of a large piece of property uh, in St. George. Long story short, uh, we got a call one day from actually they're one of our dealers now. It's a great store down in in St. George, Modern Warriors. And said, hey, Cobalt Kinetics is selling a Connex box. It has Galotech all over the place and uh, gun racks inside. They're wanting like $3,500 for it. You should go check it out. So my, my partner Jason and I uh, went over there, looked at the Connex box. It was full of guns. And we asked, well, are any of the guns for sale too? And they said, yeah, all of them are. That we're, we're, selling, we're selling the business but we want to sell it really quick. Um, and it, it's a unique situation. Uh, we didn't know what that meant, uh, but called our other partner and said, hey, maybe you should come over here. And uh, that was, let me see, that was May 29th. And by June 7th, we signed the, all, all of the documents, the IP over and, and owned Cobalt. Wow. Jeez. That was fast. It was, it was incredibly fast. Um, I've been in longer checkout lines at the supermarket. <laughs> yeah, DMV lines take a little longer. Dude, I'm telling you. Yeah, um, it, it, it was fast, uh, but we jumped in full bore. I was able to get out. Um, we kept, uh, we kept initially, we kept one employee uh, that was previous Cobalt. And then as I started to uh, work just on a contract basis with um, the design engineer, realized how incredibly talented and crucial he would be if we wanted to, 
to to move forward. Uh, so we brought him on, and then and then had another guy move out from Washington that had previously been with Cobalt. Nice. Also an engineer. Uh, no, um, he was on the military law enforcement side of uh, the sales side. Mm. He's a, a former Green Beret, Steve Wombold. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the original intent of Cobalt. Like, what was the uh, previous before you purchased it? What was their target market? Uh, so Cobalt originally started in 2014 with an emphasis on the competition world. Um, if, if you look at previous Cobalts, they are um, they look very unique. They look very different. Some people call them space guns, things like that. Uh, but there was there was specific technology or or uh, enhancements, however you want to put that, in the gun that made them incredibly soft shooting, uh, low recoil, and, and really fast. Um, moving forward to when we get in, uh, we're, J- neither Jason and I, our, our, our competition shooters, have never actually entered a competition. He's actually 20 years uh, former law enforcement out of California. That's the big dude we met, right? So he's, a, he's a massive dude. Yeah. He's like 6'6", s- six, six and... You made me feel pretty small. He does that to a lot of people. <laughs> Imagine me. Yeah. And that's yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like, what's that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito? It's twins. Twins. Yeah. Matter of fact, when we first started meeting people, I would send a picture from <laughs> that film and say, when you see two guys like this show up with beards, you'll know it's us. <laughs> we're brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What uh, was some of the interesting tech that they were kind of innovating at Cobalt? Uh, wasn't there some kind of a mag release tech? There, there was. Uh, it, it, it was called the car system, um, and uh, it was it was essentially the the bolt carrier group was always on tension, and so after the the last round was fired, the empty magazine would drop, and then inserting a new mag uh, would automatically send that bolt carrier group forward. Wow! And that's the one that had the. It's got dual, like, forward assist. So that, that's the dual drop system. Um, one kind of negates the other, and so gotcha. they, are separate, they are separate systems. Uh, we discontinued uh, fairly quickly the, the car system. Uh, we felt like it wasn't as rugged and reliable. Um, it, it was a really small, I mean, it's literally like this small of a, of a unit with, like, 24, 25 pieces in it. Oh, wow. Um, so like the size of like a half dollar. Um, I'm just looking at your. I'm trying to explain it for our listeners that aren't watching it on the YouTube. Yeah, if if you, uh, yeah, um, essentially if you took like two chiclets, you know that that square gum, mm-hmm. and stacked them, it was it was about that size. So it it took a retrofit or a different uh, cut inside the lower receiver to install it anyway. Mm. Um, yeah, so it it was really small a lot of moving parts and, and there were just reliability issues gotcha. with it. Makes sense. Yeah. Sometimes when you vary something of design that people are intimately familiar with, they have a hard time crossing over to it. Sure. Yeah. Then half my guns do this and half of them don't. And yeah, it, there, there's a lot of intrigue behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we get asked about it all the time uh, where our, you know, our goal was to, you know, we looked at it and said the competition world makes up, you know, less than 5% of the, the whole gun world. How do, we, how do we not focus on the 3% but go to the 100%, um, you know, still, still make a competitive or a competition-grade rifle, um, but also make it applicable to, to other things. And uh, when, when we started talking to law enforcement, uh, military guys, things like that, one, one of the things that they kept coming back with was, well, what if I don't want my mag to drop automatically? You know, some some law enforcement officers are running couplers, and if if they lose that mag, they lose their backup. The other mag, yeah. yeah. So we started to say, okay, how can how can we how can we transition this? How can we apply some of the the principles? Um, the the automatic bolt release side of it is is uh, we think applicable. It's uh, relevant, and it. Uh, it, it can save time, and, and essentially sure, that's where sure. we're going with it is how, how do we save time? Yeah, faster reloads. Mm-hmm. Back on target, go back to work, breaks over. Yep, yep, and uh, the, the, the dual drop was the, was the initial piece that, uh, that, that had that in mind. How do you get back on target faster? And a lot of people look at it and say, well, why do you want two forward assist? You, you know, 
there's you got the argument that no forward assist is is fine now, and then you got some people, especially more on the military side, that that say no, I've used forward assist. It, it's absolutely mm-hmm. necessary. Um, and, and we're looking at it saying stop looking at it like a forward assist and just, you know, as, as a lot of guys in the Army typically uh, put out there, you know, another tool in the tool bag. That's right. Um, that, that'll drop the bolt on either side as well. And it just allows you to use your firing hand to manipulate that. So pushing the forward assist with the bolt carrier in the open position, locked open, will release it and load Correct. the rifle. Correct. Mm. I just want to make sure people kind of get that. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 um, yeah. So it works on either you side. You can also use the paddle on the side too, right? Yep. It doesn't negate the paddle on the side. And, and right, for so me personally, I, I still use that. Continue to go your own way. And if it's easier, you can then yeah, use if, the I mean, forward if assist, which I think is cool. Habit, yeah. yeah. If, if yeah. you're in an awkward position and in, in getting to that, that, uh, that bolt release isn't, isn't, uh, easy, well, your thumb's right there, and right. you can drive that forward. It's cool to have that kind of those kind of options. Agreed. It's very unique. What else sets Cobalt apart from um, the rest? I mean, you guys, I know you make beautiful rifles. I mean, they're outstanding. If you guys haven't checked them out yet, you need to take a look at their lineup currently, and they're amazing to hold. But give it, give the audience some reasons why they should check out cobalt. Yeah, and, and, and you hit on kind of the aesthetic side of it. Uh, from from tip to butt, everything is, is meant to flow and, and fit together. So aesthetically, they're great rifles, but um, me wanting to have a, a performance-driven rifle, I don't I don't like to focus on the aesthetics. Yeah, it's what you see. It, it, it draws you to it. I mean, our, our rail system right now, and even previous cobalt, um, ha- has a monolithic look to it. I mean, it just flows right in, and, and all of the, the lines and the seams are uh, very tight. Um, but w- one thing that often does get overlooked is our recoil system. Uh, we call it our pro buffer system that is user interchangeable. It's got a series of four springs that are, um, the, it, it's, it's essentially tunable per, to the shooter and to the ammo that they're using. So you've got four weights. Uh, in, in springs, you've got a, a Delrin buffer itself that uh, cap pops off, and you can change it out with uh, tungsten weights, steel weights, just finding that perfect marriage along with, like, a, an adjustable gas block and whatever muzzle device you're I'm using. I'm super interested in that. Are you? Yes. Okay. I- that is the key <laughs> to making low port noise with a suppressor. Yeah. You know, rifle tuning, that's a great, rather than standard or stainless or h1 or two or whatever v5 springs yet another option yes yeah and and and, uh you know especially on the competitive side where where these guys might be hand loading or having a specific round that they're using being able to dial that recoil system and we call it just we call it the, the full operating system of the gun and it all has to work in sync in order for that to, to get the maximum performance out of the gun. Well, plus not to mention in today's day and age, caliber changes. Absolutely. 6.5 Grendel or 300 Black Supers or Subs or 50 Grain 5.56 five, or 69, all totally different Absolutely. tuning. Absolutely, and being able to throw on a different upper and just <laughs> essentially pop your uh, buffer retainer pin down, pop the cap, change things out real quick, um, it allows that that transition to go, uh, you know, you can tune it all. This is what I'm saying. We need to get our hands on these. I might know a guy. <laughs> okay, so we have an, like a source, a person we could go to. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are we helping you with uh, muzzle devices? I, I, I think we are, right? Are we going to yeah. do a, we're going to do a little muzzle device. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, plus we should offer some buffers and spring tuning your that part of it to our customers Mm -hmm. i think they would appreciate another option of rifle tuning i see some experimentation coming up in the pipe i do too i'm excited about that i i geek out on the experimentation side yeah it's it's fun yeah i think we all do that drives me i mean my the wheels are turning over here in this uh i mean i'm not quite the gun guy like like Pappas over here, but I, I really like the idea that, you know, cause everyone shoots differently. Everyone's goals are different. 
and there's so many different components that go into um, shooting a rifle. Uh, you know, like you just listed off a few with the recoil and the, the different ammo types and depending on what you're doing, right? There's the competition shooter, there's the tactical guy. There's, Absolutely. you know, so um, being able to retrofit your rifle to your suit your needs uh, based on what you're wanting to do with it and what you're shooting out of it. I mean, adding a can to it adds an additional component to it. So being able to have that freedom to adjust accordingly to that is going to bring the best out of the shooter as well as the rifle, which is awesome. Yeah. And, and as we go down that, that muzzle device and, you know, we, we talked a couple months ago about, um, you know, licensing that, uh, sure. That, that yeah, locking with mechanism. your own take on that. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I look at it and say, okay, now, now it's my responsibility to make something worthy enough for that and justifiable to have, you know, there's lots of different muzzle devices out there and, uh, what what is new, but also bring something new to the table that that doesn't exist, and so that that's that's the route I'm I'm testing right now. Agreed, and it also needs to interface with the rest of your system. Absolutely. You know, I mean, one customer that works with us is totally unlike another customer because their firearms are wildly different. A regular AR-15 versus a bolt gun, per se. Sure. Totally different animals. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited to get a some kind of a unique take on a muscle device with you guys. We talk about seracoding. Uh, oh yeah. Because you guys have like an artist. Yeah. He's very good at so, what he does. So he, he he when I when I mentioned before that we we initially kept uh, one employee from from Cobalt, it was it was a no brainer and a yeah we have to have this guy Matt Hamilton. Um, he, he's done some pretty incredible things over the years. His background is in, um, uh, auto paint. Um, and his brother actually owns a shop that, that they do some pretty, just really cool stuff with, uh, uh um, older cars and things like mm-hmm. that. So he, he, he's like pinstriping and yes. And I mean, he, he, I think he, he was the first guy or one of the first guys in the country to, to prove that you could put, uh, uh, Cerakote through an airbrush. Mm. And so his attention to detail, his, his artistry is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, you can go to him and say, I, I want this, but like, I can't design it myself. I just want it to feel like this and it'll come out better than you could have yeah. even dreamt it. And he doesn't just, um, he's not like one of those guys that works on, this is my opinion, basically based on what I've heard from you guys. I mean, he takes his time, you know, like as far as like he, I mean, he's putting the time in to make the art, the, the product beautiful and perfect and yeah yeah his his prep time is uh is pretty unbelievable and in the work ethic he has to to get that side of it um i mean he'll spend hours and hours just coming up with with the perfect design he'll you know make vinyl cuts uh do prep stuff um do kind of sample sample coatings and things like that and then go into it for for the final product now do you guys just seracote your own rifles or can customers hit you up and be like hey i have this rifle can you seracote it but we do we'll we'll, we'll take other rifles we don't like to as much just because sure. you know it we're proud of how it looks on our rifles uh-huh. um but we, we do that all the time especially guys like in california um uh right now where um and i don't know if you've seen um uh mike knockout lights Mm-hmm. Um, where they have a lower that is registered in California, um, they'll send that to us, and then we'll we'll put our upper on it and our internals, and then seracote the whole thing to match, and that's become a, a fairly popular thing. I can't I can't uh, guarantee that the the same timelines mm-hmm. are, are there on yeah, the, that of kind of stuff, but um, yeah, we'll we'll do anything, so especially you- the more popular you guys get. You sure. have packages to choose from, or it's individual per customer on a one to, on one basis. We have kind of a, 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 a set minimum, but uh, where where it's all custom stuff, it it really um, it requires a, a a phone consultation with gotcha. Matt, and he'll take the time and spend uh, you know three or four phone calls if that's what it takes to um, and, and some sample colors and things like that to where you know you know what you're getting. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I like that. We have an artist at Dead Air. <laughs> yeah. Graduate, like a yeah. art major. Yeah. I you just did, learned that. You didn't know that, did you? I, I actually just learned that uh, watching the, 
the podcast that just dropped. Oh, with Jack. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that briefly. Yeah. Yeah. I almost didn't make it through, believe it or not. Really? <laughs> the art program. Oh, yeah. I was, the, I was almost a college dropout, but I, I, I took a, a victory lap, as they call it. So it took me five years to graduate. Much of that was because of football. I was the only art major that played football. So I didn't fit in very well. <laughs> well, our art and I have nothing in common, so. Nice. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'll, I'll chicken scratch stuff somewhere, and I've got my design engineer, Cliff, and Matt, who will both look at it and say, um, it, it, they'll redraw it and say, is this what you were actually trying to put out there? And you're like, yeah. Uh-huh. like yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> hey, you guys are my translators. Not a lot of people know this, but actually all the ink on my arm is uh, illustrations from a graphic novel I wrote in college. I got to read that. It's nothing you'd be that. Oh, actually, you probably would. It's about the end of the world. Can you get it in print? I have it in print. That's all you can do. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I thought about doing a series. I just, ever since I finished it, like, I I never got back. It's just time, you know. Life gets in the way, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. The apocalypse. A lot of the illustrations in it were uh, themed, um, or I should say inspired by the original uh, Watchmen graphic novel. So there's the movie Watchmen, which is, they did a great job. Um, the ending's different than the actual graphic novel, but the graphic novel is phenomenal. For all the comic nerds out there, you'll know what I'm talking about. And for those of you who aren't comic nerds, graphic novel is kind of a fancier way of calling a comic book <laughs> a book. <laughs> Classy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm making fun of myself. Doing well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so 2021, right? Yep. You you guys have, have been in business for about a year now since you took it over, right? Or it has been a year. Uh, in like six days, it'll be a year. Whoa. I know, we're going to have an anniversary party. Well, maybe. We'll bring whiskey. Okay. <laughs> like at your facility? Yeah. Yeah. Just tell us when. I don't know. I won't even be there, so... Oh, well, then we're not going. They might do something. Okay. So uh, what's on, what's priorities right now? Where can people find um, Cobalt, purchase it, or is it just all online right now? Uh, No, we we have, uh, so obviously our our online, um, our website, you can make orders there. Um, That's CobaltKinetics.com. CobaltKinetics.com. So a customer can go there and buy direct from you. They can, they can. Um, if you want custom stuff added on top of that, that that's really the best place to buy it because you you know you'll place the order and then um, it, just in the notes section say hey I want a custom Cerakote on this, uh, then we'll reach out to you and kind of initiate that process. Um, typically it takes ten to fourteen days uh, f- for the custom side of it, but we're, we're tracking right now. We did get a little bit behind because we were waiting on uh, um, so, some handguard stuff to come in, but I don't think we've gone past. 21, 28 days maybe is, is has been our longest lead time. Wow, that's good. That's actually pretty fast. That's really good. Yeah. It's it's stressful. Do you <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Are you in distribution? We do. We have a we have a few distributors, um, mostly on the east coast, so the Midwest East, um, and then uh West Coast side of things. Uh we do a lot of work in California. Um and and I think that's because we we take the time to um, really go after that market and we'll make the adjustments we need to for compliance. Um, you know, we do the same thing in Connecticut, New Jersey. Um, it, basically, if there's a way to get an AR there, we'll make the effort to get it there. Because you can send a AR-15 to Connecticut if it's pre-90 well, or? I, I, I think right now there's a, uh, there's a loophole there that allows um, like a 12 and a half or th- like 12 and a half to like 13 inch barrel, I think is really the wiggle room there. And, and I could be wrong. This is just what, we, what we've been doing um, in, in a pistol configuration, um, but it cannot be labeled as a, a pistol or a rifle. It has to be a CT other or a Connecticut other. Um, it's, it's some weird, weird loopholes there, but we, uh, we trust the, uh, the, the FFLs there and, and that they're in compliance. And yeah. you know, as long as we stay in compliance on our side, we're good. Mm-hmm. Connecticut speaks a different language. I'm constantly learning about the oddities of Connecticut firearms ownership. I believe they have to have all of their magazines accounted for. Oh, really? Yes. That's what my understanding is that they say you had 10 556 NATO mags, you registered 
it's been some years ago, I believe, but you registered those 10 magazines and then they expect you to have 10, not nine or 11. Hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it's I, very odd. You know, kind of think of it. I don't even know if we send mags with those guns. Maybe uh, for that reason. Probably don't. Hmm. That would trip up the count of your customers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we, we try and we try to be uh, fairly accommodating there. But I know that they can get a AR-15 brought in, but it, I believe that those are part of the people that attack the, you know, SP1s on Gunbroker or whatever. Sure. Because they can't get a, you know, newer one. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what you guys offer, the full lineup right now, currently. Okay. Um, so we, we, we are still doing uh, several of the, uh, the, we call them our, our legacy guns um, the, from, from previous Cobalt. Uh, we got, we got the, the weird thing is there were so many different kinds and it could be the same exact setup, but in a different color or one little thing tweaked and it was a whole new model, a whole new skew. So we, we got rid of that. Mm. Um, but the, the old edge uh, platform, that's the one with the spiky edges and the spiky oh, yeah. hand guards. Um, we, we kept that one. Um, it was a cool looking rifle. It is, unless you try to put it in a bag, <laughs> <laughs> then it, then it's pretty brutal. Well, um, if you run out of ammo, you could use it as just, a weapon. Yes, yeah, it's a good pig gun. <laughs> so there's no legacy guns to be purchased now. They're all sold. Yeah, all all, all of the all of the inventory that we inherited or or purchased it's up all front. Gone. That yeah, that was gone. Um, I want to say within our first two months, um, and, and it wasn't a ton. But, sure. but we got we we got that out, um, and so we're just remaking that stuff. Um, basically, the same gun. It's called the team gun. Um, it's it's the same gun without the spikes. It's blunted uh, edges on the handguard. Um, that's still there. There's a little bit of a back order on that, um, getting handguards and stuff through. But our our main focus has been our professional series. It comes in three sizes. Um, well, three size hand guards, a six and three quarter inch, a 12 and a half inch and a 15, five. Uh, we have added a 13, five in there, uh, in limited numbers, but then outside of that, and this is where we get into the, the state compliance side of things. We we've added a ton of different barrel lengths. Mm. Um, so anywhere from six and three quarters, seven and a half, uh, 11 and a half, 12 and a half, 13, seven. 14, 5, and 16. And then for California, we added a 13, 2. Um, if, if you want a pin and welded, uh, our, our six port break, it's, it's massively loud. It's, it's concussive beyond belief, but it's incredibly flat shooting. Um, and so for those in California that wanted a shorter overall rifle, um, it, it was still a performance, you know, a high level of performance. Um, we, we do several of those. Mm. Those are all the craze right now. Everyone wants a short rifle. Yes, well, they do. They're just lighter weight and, and, and easier to manipulate, maneuver, you know, throw around. Mm-hmm. So I get it. I like shooting from farther away. I think 16 inches is the longest barrel length that you currently offer. Um, we, we do offer 18, um, but but it's uh, it, it's not a world we focus in yet, and, that, and that's primarily because we are – we are wanting to do a, a, a DMR platform, and it's not refined to the level that we want it to be yet. But, it, but it's in the works right now. I prefer myself liking a longer barrel generally, but I also like to carbine, as it were, a little <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah, I brought that up because I knew Mike. Mike uh, I mean, I, I do myself as well. I'm, I'm more of a longer barrel type guy. Yeah. Um, but also weight isn't as much of an issue for me. Um, a bigger guy so it's not an issue <clears throat> it's not an issue for me either i drive it around in the truck <laughs> say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't shoot inside the truck remember that's a rule yeah again i know it was just memorial day but any current servicemen please exit your vehicle mm-hmm. before firing i found two more links over the weekend in the Dang. Truck, like I've taken the whole thing apart and I <laughs> keep finding them. Why? Thanks for the links, though, right, boys? Well, thanks for the links, but <laughs> they've been more of a problem than a bonus to find. It'd be Spent cool. Spent casing stuffed everywhere, you know. It'd be cool if we had a hog issue out here because then we could just load a bunch of guys in the back of that truck and just 
wheel down through a field and start picking off hogs. I can just see that being a fun activity. That would be cool, but, you know, as the glass is half full, we don't have a hog <laughs> issue here. Like, we have zero. Yeah. Come down to St. George. I hear I, that they're getting I haven't getting seen bad. any. I haven't seen any, really? but they say, like, right over the border into Arizona, there's, uh, like, small pockets of, of massive problem. I've heard that same thing. Yeah. Do you think that's trickling slowly from the Texas issue? Oh, I'm sure. Wow. I'm sure. I, I think if you look back, there's it, it kind of all started spreading out from Texas in every direction. Man. I don't think they want to come to this elevation, though, so we should be safe. Yeah, I think you're smart on that one. It's a little chilly for yeah. most of the year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless Absolutely. they want to root around and enjoy an icicle here or there. I highly doubt it, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a tough, long winter with zero food. That's the reason I'm in St. George. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm the same. You're I, I done guess, with the ice? Yeah, yeah. guess I'm uh, at the pig level. <laughs> don't don't want to be up here. I'm thinking about going further north as it gets more and more populated here. Oof. I'm never going to, but I, I mean, the thought crosses my mind. Let's talk about material for our listeners. All what right. makes up a cobalt rifle, your barrel, all the goods? Uh, let's get deep. Unless you can't. I mean, I'm sure there is some yeah, things you can say, but if there's anything proprietary, you don't need to talk about it. Yeah, su- super rare metals, unobtainium stuff, <laughs> uh, for sure. Uh, no, no, it's a uh, uh, 7075 T6 uh, aluminum on the uh, the the outside. Um, our, our barrels, uh, we, we've been back and forth on, on direction for barrels and have uh, a, a couple different groups that were we're working with uh we, we've started in the last uh i'd say two or three months uh making a transition to roscoe barrels for the most part um and then um doing some specialized stuff with with another organization on a um on, on a hammer forged barrel as well i like nice. the sound of that i do too yeah. is that chrome lined i assume <laughs> yes yes yeah, the bar- the barrel side of things, and, and and really working with other vendors, other manufacturers, especially being such a small business. Um, I mean, our numbers are never going to be at the level of uh, of a bigger player in the game. Um, Don't say that. You never know. I well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got into this from being just constantly busy in pharmaceuticals wanting, I want to say, I want a lifestyle change. Gotcha. And so getting in, I'm going, I don't want to do over 600 guns a month. Mm. That number has definitely changed mm-hmm. um, as, as, as we've, we've grown and, and expanded the marketing and things like that. Um, but, but I still don't see us uh, ever going above, you know, a thousand, 1500 guns a month. Mm. I don't Cause you see don't it. want it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I, I like, well, well you, there's a lot of reasons behind that. Sure. One for for my stress, but I'm expendable, so I can I can be gone and not worry about it. Um, but from an employee perspective, uh, I, I told you that that in March of that year, I uh, that w- that we bought Cobalt, I was looking for uh, something else. But part of that was I wanted to uh, I, I wanted to provide for other people and give them security, give them you know have a family atmosphere in a business. And uh, I, I don't think with the ebbs and flows of this industry that you can go too big and maintain that level of, that's awesome. of family in there. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I respect a person that actually starts out and having a life is important to them. Because mm-hmm. you can get swept away Absolutely. in business and all of a sudden before you know it, you're doing it all day and night. And, and you're this weekend. corporate giant. And it takes over your life. Yeah, Yeah, you're overweight and stressed all the time. Mm-hmm. I know that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's cool that you have that sort of vision for your uh, employees, too. You know, I I definitely would say that it's the same here at Dead Air, uh, the family environment, you know. We strive for that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fun to come to work. I mean, you know, when you wake up in the morning knowing you're going to be around a, a, a bunch of like-minded guys that <clears throat> have your best interest in mind is irreplaceable. I I've also done the corporate thing where you've got, you know, a thousand plus employees and you're just a number on the books. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. Does it? No. Yeah. And, and I mean, 
that's not to say that, you know, dramas aren't there, personalities aren't there, but it's a lot easier to, to maintain that uh, family atmosphere, that, that, that culture that you want to have in your business, um, even working through those personalities when you have a smaller group. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I couldn't make it in a thousand plus. Sorry. It's tough. No. Yeah. Then you got like serious. I mean, you start going that corporate route, you know, you start to lose that. And honestly, I feel like it, it uh, reflects through marketing and the connection to customers too. Um, you know, the, the bigger gun companies specifically in our industry, uh, there's, there's not as much of a connection between the customer and the company. You know, I think we have a pretty firm finger on the pulse of our audience. We have a, a great connection with them. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we're not going in that direction as a company, that corporate sterile feeling. Yeah. And I think, uh, I, I think that connection with the customer and when they understand, when they feel like you're listening to them as well. Um, you know, I, I tell my guys this all the time and, and I tell myself it too, that I don't ever want to be that company that gets too high on their own product and uh, too myopic in their thinking because if we're not making changes to what customers want, to what end users want, then we're just stagnant and we turn into, you know, I hesitate to say everyone else because it's not everyone else, but it's what typically has been there. I mean, I, I ran the same rifle for the last 12 years because no one else came anywhere close to what I wanted to see in a rifle, but they were, you know, that, that company was the Mm -hmm. closest. And I just want to always be thinking, uh, you know, what, what do you want as a customer? And most people don't know this, but, um, for the longest time, if you, if you wrote into sales at cobaltkinetics.com or marketing at cobaltkinetics.com, uh, the reply that you got was from me and, Mm. and and I'd sit in bed till 1130 midnight, one o'clock. It didn't matter making sure that all of those emails were answered every single day. Um, just because I, I wanted that connection with the customer mm-hmm. as we're, as we're growing, I want to see, you know, what are you liking? What are you disliking? What problems are you having? Cause it's my responsibility to bring it back to my team and, and make sure awesome. we have that. You said getting high on your own product earlier. Was that a pharmaceutical joke? May, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't let that go. <laughs> That's your own supply. Yeah. 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 Oh. I was very careful with how I phrased that. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. That's a no, no. That's a no, no. Yeah, but you're that. right. Buying into your own BS is not good. Mm, no right? one wins. No, no. And the corporate feel, you know, you wonder, do any of the higher ups at these giant companies, did they do some shooting over the weekend? Probably not. Probably not. Mike did. I did, and I really liked it. I was living vicariously through Austin's posts about it. I, I I really did want to go, but I didn't go. Obviously, I told my wife I. It's easy to forget how much I really enjoy shooting when I'm not helping other people shoot. Mm. Like I'm there with my own stuff to do my own thing, and it's nice. Sometimes that all that work company shooting gets. Yeah, it's, it's not bad, but it's work. Yeah, it's still it's still fun that you get to do it. But I think, to your point, Mike, a lot of people are like, oh, you get to go shooting all the time for a job. <laughs> and it's like, well, it kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit. Yeah, when you're testing product, when you're, like, going out doing demos and stuff, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you might shoot a lot of rounds throughout a month, but then you look back and you're like, I didn't do any training. I didn't do anything, mm-hmm. like, for me. Mm-hmm. So, That's right. I developed some loads and tested them and loaded and shot at range and... It was beautiful. Mm. That's awesome. You guys shot some pretty... Uh, didn't you guys shoot that Austin's new uh, 50 that we talked about on the podcast? We did. How was that? It was good. I shot that rifle on a bench on Saturday and just put three into a ragged hole. Mm. That thing can shoot. How Austin, what was the distance? 100 yards. We were just over at the Lions Gun gotcha. Club getting some zeros, but Austin shot a plate and that was held by chains, but the chains were not large enough. Oh snap! And that plate, it looks James filmed through a spotting scope, and it looks awesome. 
that huh. plate went to full speed and just winged off into the dirt. What was the distance he shot the plate from? I think that was, um, I want to say eight. He had that sweet night force Something like on that, that huh? five maybe. Huh. I don't know, but when he wheeled over and let that plate have it with a 750 Amex, that was all she wrote. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That was kind of fun looking. Should we uh, give our sponsors a shout out? Oh, we didn't do that. No, not yet. Like to thank the Arrowhead people for sticking with us. Yeah. Through thick and thin, as it were. Oh, my bad, guys. I drink a gallon of this a day. A gallon a day. Yeah. Remember that one podcast where you said I had to keep my muscles wet? It's true. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just emphasizing the amount. I fully realize how much you drink a day. I don't. I just drink when I'm thirsty. I don't know how much it is. That's me too. Probably more in the summer. <laughs> how long of a drive is it from St. George to here in Camas? Um, on Memorial Day. Oh, that's right. You drove during Memorial Day? Look oh, at yeah. you. Yeah. That's a mistake. It was an absolute mistake for <laughs> sure. I, I, I don't understand uh, how nobody grasped the concept of cruise control. That's uh, frustrating and, uh, oh, in Utah. Yes, yeah, so I yeah. use cruise control. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's necessary if you want to maintain on, on. I mean, it's really one one freeway coming up here. I'd tell you it's four hours. You know, a couple quick stops, and you go the speed limit. So that's yeah, and I don't speed, but yes, oh. uh, typically four hours. Uh, yesterday was five and a half. Yuck! Oh, so you followed some underpowered trucks with some oversized campers i guess a little bit of that uh some minivans that must not have been equipped with with cruise control um and mm-hmm. then there are a couple of accidents as well so that really d- does need to stop though it gives me a great deal of anxiety when i see a jeep cherokee pulling a massive uh <clears throat> camper behind it stop doing that yeah with nebraska plates stop it Everyone please who's doing that, stop it. Please quit exceeding your rated tow limit. It's dangerous and stupid. You look stupid. And we know your trailer brakes don't work. We know it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honestly, you should really be pulling a trailer that size with a you know decent diesel. Like I, I sometimes struggle when I see you know an F one fifty pulling it, and it's, especially when you get on a a nice little incline, you're just like, what are you doing? Yeah, just riding a wheelie all the way down yeah. the interstate. I agree with you. Did you see that my truck's hooked to a trailer out there? I didn't notice it. Yeah, it's all oh, that's hitched right. up and ready to go. What's Mike doing later today? I'm going to take Abby's lambs to the weigh-in and tagging for 4-H so we can compete in the county fair. And win again. Well, or at least not come in last. <laughs> we try, but we're not really cheap people, as it were. A Summit County Fair? Yeah, correct. Haven't there been some threats on the property? Are you, or you not want to talk about that with your sheep? Some animals? Well, I had a couple of rogue dogs come over, but I have a pretty solid pen. But I had a talk with the owner, and he seemed adamant to keep his attack dogs on his own property. Yeah, I can't imagine... We'll see how that goes through the summer. Being the new guy in the block, not knowing who Mike Pappas is with a couple of dogs that should be chained up, and then having Mike Pappas show up to your house to con- have a discussion uh, about that. <laughs> would I don't be pretty think it's really that big a deal. Oh. But. I'm sure you were really nice, but if he finds out who you are and, you know, later, he's going to be like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Dude's got a tank. <laughs> It's I'm assuming fine. that won't hurt his dogs. <laughs> I'm assuming you didn't show up with a plate of cookies, welcoming him to the neighborhood. No, I was like, dude, you know, yeah. come on, man. I've got my little 15 year old daughter walking these sheep, and I don't want an attack on the highway. More like you don't want an attack. It will on be the okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll work it out. Yeah. So, anything special? 2021 other than you know the current uh, path that you're on that you've talked about already yeah so uh and and I, I think I may have left off a couple things in in going to the the professional 
uh, line, we the whole idea behind that was to lighten the the rifle um, altogether. And so, you know, on an apples to apples comparison, it's a pound and a half lighter than the previous uh, models. And uh, we're going to be taking that uh, that same thought process and 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 construction and uh, moving it into the XL platform in uh, 308 and 65 Creedmoor. Um, Damn. We're hoping for those to drop um, uh, end, end of Q3, beginning of Q4 this year um, with some kind of with some uniqueness, um, not just the, the longer barrel stuff, but we're, we're looking to go down to 12 and a half inch on a 308 and mm. uh, 13 7 on a 65 Creedmoor. Twelve and a half inch on a three oh eight. That's actually not too bad. Yeah. That will shoot well. I want to play with it. I like three oh eight. I hate to admit this, but I'm lacking a launching platform for six five creed more. Really? Sad, huh? I would have never guessed that. It's popular enough, I think I need to think about changing that. I have one if you want to buy it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's been shot. I'm not sure what I want. Hmm. Bolt gun? Why don't we ask AR-10? the audience? Let's give uh, Mike a little... MRAD conversion? suggestion? There you go. Kind of toying with that. Mm. Austin did a Daniel Defense review of a 6.5 AR-10 style rifle, and I got to shoot that, and it was actually pretty awesome. Mm. Platform that I've had for a couple years now, uh, LMT makes a really reliable uh-huh. and great 6.5 Creedmoor. Dual extractors, mm-hmm. yeah, that would be nice too. Twenty-four inch barrel, it's it's uh, it's a great gun. Got a plan to get some of that LMT money together. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna hunt with a six-five Creedmoor this year. Smart. Might use metallic sights only because Mike's been guilting me to stay with that. Oh, you're gonna be hunting in thick pines. Sights will be fine. I hope there's some open spaces up here. Oh, it can be a little open. And I need to do some thick. glassing. Yeah. You'll be hunting in the trees, you know, looking in the trees for them. Mm-hmm. They don't generally just stand out in the open. No. no. If you're packing it around, you wanna, you're want to, you going to want a smaller, lighter rifle, too. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah. I would I would enjoy that. Again, I, uh, I might know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> you could get the first good solid hunt on the new... Cobalt kinetic. Shoot, I'll put a GoPro five. on it. That'd be fun. We'll do some. Maybe I'm gonna. I'm taking our boy Jake, or he's. I should say he's taking me. Uh, Jake Broadhead. Rich has friend a friend of guide. our company. Yeah, he's gonna show me the ropes up here in the mountains. Save time. So, nice. Yeah, I think that'll be good for you. I'm really excited. It's, I didn't draw last year. You know, in Idaho, you don't have to draw. You just go buy your tag. Here you get a draw, which is a little frustrating, but it makes sense. I know why. And it, pick your area, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, there, there's some tags you can buy, though. Really? Mm-hmm. You don't like uh, like what? Like cow tags. Oh, yeah. Um, doe tags, things like, things I like that. I think you can buy, stuff. like, uh, bear and mountain lion, too, I believe. Yeah, a- I don't anytime, think I think. put in for that. Really? Uh, yeah. I'm learning, guys. <laughs> yeah, especially uh, archery as well you can uh yeah i heard about that with archery yeah yeah i haven't gotten into it yet primitive weapons aren't as popular Uh uh-uh but they're fun more open tag availability Mm -hmm. longer seasons i've always wanted to hunt in moccasins i have a buddy who bow hunts in moccasins (laughs) you you gotta pair that with a loincloth though yes like turok that's where my mind goes. Video <laughs> games. <laughs> Everyone knows what I'm talking about. That's listening. <laughs> I didn't. You don't. I, I don't play Turok. Miles, did you play Turok? What? Marcus? I'm the only one in this room that even knows what you're talking about oh, right gosh. now. I'm sorry for wasting everyone's time. Forgiven. <laughs> it's okay. So we uh, we're really excited to see the development. I mean, you've already come so far in the last year. It's been a it's been a cool journey, that's yeah. for sure. Meeting like incredible people. Uh, you know, I I've been a lifelong uh, gun owner and gun enthusiast, 
and uh, it, it's it's been a, a, a really surreal um, break into it. But you know, guys that I've always looked up to, um, you know, including Mike, that you know, um, local guy, but just a legend in the industry. But then meeting these people has been uh, has been awesome, and, and seeing who they are in in real life and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think the first time I saw you was. Uh, Years ago, I think I told you this at the at the vault uh, down oh, in, uh, in, right. in uh, between like my Jordan. silencer co and dead air ten years it were. That's yeah. crazy. I didn't know that. Oddly enough, Aaron and I share the same high school alma mater. Oh, that's right. You guys both went to Heber. Wasatch yeah, High. Wasatch High. Wow. We're wasps. <laughs> yeah, we, we, <laughs> yeah. Try try saying that like. Uh, it's a stupid really mascot, but yeah. whatever. It's been a while. We're wasps. Yeah, we were just talking off, off, the Wasatch uh, wasps earlier. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> off air. We actually had some of the same teachers. What? Or had like crossover in those Crazy. teachers? They were starting their careers when I went through, and they were preparing for retirement when I kicked them into <laughs> retirement for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like that—that's the type of student I was. Yes. Like I'm—I'm I'm done with this. Yes. Yeah. I love it. That's really cool. Yeah. Small me. world. And, and then we share the same friend, Jack Callahan. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. He's a, he's uh, you know, Jack's one of those guys that he just doesn't stop. And I don't he know how he does it. He reached out to to us. Uh, like when we when we first barely started, and I'm I'm new to this, but don't want to, you know, jump into anything real quick. And he just kept hounding and hounding and hounding. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna call this guy back. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was the best call I've ever made. Yeah, smart. Yeah, my, Jack's a, He is so connected, and I think it's because he doesn't stop moving. Yeah, and he's it, so so good with his relationships and his willingness to just continue on and mm-hmm. like fight for you and and like hype you up and, and talk about you. It makes you on, on the manufacturing side say, uh, well, we've got to live up to what he's telling people. Mm-hmm. And then also ask him, Hey, what are you telling people? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have, we're going to have whiskey savage on the next episode. That's right. That'll be exciting. It will be entertaining. He's we flying him all the way out from Texas to come join us. Wow. He and I are definitely different sizes. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big dude. Yeah, he's he's another one that's uh, like I'm just surrounded by tall people and I'm just like <laughs> the midget in the room. You're the Frodo. Yeah, we're the uh, Fellowship of the Ring. It's less hairy feet though. Yeah, <laughs> no, I've I'm, got all that. I'm just straight average. I wouldn't say that. You're a beast. Six feet, normal height. Get you up in the mountains though. Start logging. It's a different story. Still six feet. <laughs> six feet's tall to me, though. How tall are you? Like five eight, five nine. That's why you like the shorter rifles. Yeah, I mean, on top of that, like you know how people tell you your wingspan should be your height. Yeah. Well, if my wingspan were my height, I'd be like five five and a half. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> definitely shorter rifles for me. That's why twelve, the twelve and a half that we have is like I'm like that has to be our rifle. Man, I wish we had one in front of us right now. We could show the audience, at least who's watching on YouTube. Um, but that's my bad. I have them in my car. Oh, jeez. Yeah, sorry Damn. about that. You want to have Miles go grab one? Y- yes. I know the audience on YouTube would like to watch it. Just walk right in front of the camera. Say hi to everyone, though. That was Miles. <laughs> we love him. Miles is the man. Just in the, uh, in the uh, back seat, there should just be one there. Did you only bring one? The one? No. Okay. No. Do you want gotcha. me to grab that one right now? You don't have to. It's up to you. I can do it right now. Why don't we do it right now? Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. We have a little surprise. Except uh, Miles is already outside. Okay. So We'll save it for epi- the next episode. I'm okay doing it now. You want to do it now? Well, it's like 15 feet away. Okay. Get it. Okay. Should I go? Yeah. Okay. And we're back. Aaron's we're back. got something. He's pulling that out of a box for those of you who cannot see. Here it comes. Ooh. All right, now he's setting it on the table. Now we have two. If you guys want to see this and you're listening in on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, SoundCloud, or any of the other platforms we're on, 
you might want to tune in tune into the uh, the YouTube video. Tell us about this one. Okay, so this one is this one is our twelve and a half inch hand guard. Um, Hold it up. Grab that bad boy. Not the mic, the uh, gun. So that's an SBR. This is an SBR. It's got our Sandman on there. I like there. that. It's got a Sandman K on it. Uh, it's an 11 and a half inch barrel. And uh, we originally designed this in case anyone wanted to inset a suppressor. Mm. They could with most suppressors. Um, I kind of feel like it was designed for the chemo mount because it makes taking on and off mm-hmm. easier right here. Um, and goes down and just fits really nicely in there. It's very, uh, very sleek. Yeah, that's one of the uh, few rails that I've seen that the can looks, it's not super oversized. It looks very natural in there. Yeah, and, and I still wanted, uh, one thing that the uh, the old series had was when, when you put your hand, when you grab that hand guard, it feels like it was made for a hand. The ergonomics of it mm-hmm. uh, were phenomenal. And so, but it didn't have a full length rail on it. Um, and th- that was something I felt was absolutely necessary along with seven side M lock. Um, so we kept that, uh, that diameter of most of the rail the same. The tricky part was uh, incorporating a flare into it. That flare will go out to 1.7 inches. And uh, for a lot of suppressors, it does work. Um, Anything 1.5 in diameter, I guess, right? Yeah, it, even up to uh, like one, one six five. Nice. We'll, we'll even go in there fairly well, uh, especially on the like a 12 and a half inch barrel. What um, would be our Nomad? It's in, it's uh, one and three eighths, I believe. No. Uh, one seven five. It's a little bit bigger. Can you put a chemo mount on a Nomad? Yes, but it will. It would not fit in that. It would fit on our 12.5. Nice. Because it because of the way the chemo sits right I here. I bet that would look really cool. Yeah, I actually have one in my car. It doesn't have a dead air on it, but it has the chemo mount on it and goes in. Fits fits actually nice. really nicely, um, especially when you have that kind of collar, that neck or that neck down mm-hmm. on, on stuff. Um, and then the the other unique piece that we did with uh, with this is. And it, it is proprietary. It's not super backwards compatible. Um, but the upper receiver uh, extends out about three inches right here. And uh, so the handguard mount is integral into the upper. We did that for, for, for a couple reasons, but strength was the, the biggest thing there. Um, when you mount a, a barrel in there, there's no additional touch points um, uh, off of a standard um, <clears throat> like a mil spec rifle, but uh, it just has a lot of threat engagement here. So it's like that one spot is, st- is getting added strength to it. Mm. Plus, when you take your handguard on and off, these are locking screws directionally. And so uh, it, it goes back to the same spot. You never lose zero up here. Things like that. Nice, smart. Yeah. Thanks so. for explaining all that. I think that's important for our listeners. It's super important if they have an IR laser. Yes, or, well, yeah, <laughs> right? absolutely, absolutely. And then the other thing, you know, people think when you have a suppressor here um, inside that it gets really hot, but because of, of, of that flare and then the vents, we, we vent the top of the, uh, the handguard. Uh, you can see that, Mike. Oh. Viewers, you can see that right there, kind of up and down here. Um, it vents really well and does not get hot. This, this maintains the same temperature as this uh, for the most part. Now, if you do like several hundred rounds of a mag dump, the whole rifle is going to get hot, and so that, that'll, that'll continue on there. Um, but for the most part, it, it, it maintains fairly well. I like that. Mm-hmm. So I was just enjoying a little cool off time while I was shooting yesterday. Mm. You know, so that would reduce that. And like, you know, you can only shoot so long and then you get that mirage. And, and I don't have patience. <laughs> Quicker <laughs> cool down yeah. time. That's what I'm saying. I want to go back to work. It's a fine piece of equipment right there. Well, if you're okay with it, then I'll just open this right now. Yes. Okay. Why wouldn't we be? I don't know. Ooh. You guys. I like the color. Okay, so this one comes a little bit unique um, in that it doesn't have a muzzle device on it. um, And it's 
doesn't have a muzzle device because uh, we haven't finalized our okay dealer yeah, yeah. dealerness, if you will here. <laughs> um, so this is an 18 inch barrel. It's well, I didn't want to do it yet. This is super secret. Here it is. Okay, so guys. this has an 18 inch barrel. It's uh it's actually a prototype. And uh, from Ballistic Advantage, the, uh, the previous Cobalt had done uh, trying to get a highly accurate but um, lighter weight, more rigid. So it's the coating on it is, or the treatment on it, is not a nitride melanite. It's a lithium iron, mm. which uh, heats at half the temperature as nitride and uh, penetrates four times as much. Dang. So nice. You get lighter weight and uh, more rigidity out of it. So, what's it say on that side? Oh, on this side? Oh. Huh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, we brought this up to uh to deliver to you, Mike. No way. Yes. So, you've got Look Cobalt Kinetics that. in an 18-inch barrel. And knowing that uh you might be interested in um tinkering with the buffer system, uh oh, he's got something else here. Oh, <laughs> get out of town, I, dude! I included additional springs and weights on it. Oh, that's beautiful, huh? So, well, that worked out way easier than I thought it was going to. Yeah. Thank you. We're gonna do a little uh, playing around with this and some demoing and testing and get into that. Well, that's exciting. Thank you yeah, very that, much. That was the question the other day of, do you prefer flat trigger or curved? Yeah. Uh, Jack Callahan <laughs> was certain you liked curved, and I was like, no. I like curved on certain things. Like Mrs. Like Pappas. a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You're welcome. Nice. This is... That's it. This is the best podcast ever. <laughs> I agree. Sorry, 17, 18, would you say it was? 18. 18? <laughs> yeah. Sean Whalen's is 17. We just got done with his. Well, this beats that now. I didn't recall Sean giving us anything super cool. Beautiful piece of equipment right there. No, that's, I didn't, I didn't mean that. I'm just excited. Yeah. Don't beat me up, Sean. He'll have to come through me first. And that's Thanks, not, Rich. That's not happening. There you go. It'd be like office linebacker. Remember Tate? Office linebacker. Come on. Someone's got to remember that one. Where he went, runs through the office and he's just like, not today, Karen. <laughs> Starts clotheslining people. Anyway. No. I got nothing. <laughs> Miles yeah. remembers. Come on. I think I have a vague recollection. Oh, okay. Miles looks like he's just saying that. I he, don't. Yeah, he, he cares about He doesn't feelings. look committed over there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what an awesome ep episode. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. We're super excited to toy with that rifle a little bit and work with you guys. Yeah. I, I'm anxious to, to get feedback. Um, you oh, know, you're going to get it. I, I, I want it. I, and I tell people all the time, just be as brutally honest with me as, as you can because... Again, going back to before, there's no way to improve if I'm not hearing it from people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I always want to make sure that uh, Cobalt Kinetics is is looking to innovate and move toward not only not only new things, but um, you know, better, mm -hmm. better. And, and status quo isn't isn't good enough. Sure. And uh, there's a lot of great ARs out there. Um, I've I've you know shot a lot of them over the years, but if I don't want to introduce something that doesn't provide something different or better mm, love that which is why you guys need to go check them out aaron uh what's so it's cobalt kinetics on instagram uh yeah cobalt.kinetics on instagram um give him a follow yes you follow me too aaron.cobalt or oh, uh, yeah he's new to the instagram game yeah i'm super uh, new we'll so. have to look that up when we get off here yeah it's 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 not impressive and it's uh like i i'm i, I check with people like it's can starting. i post this um, so, <laughs> like, like, is this okay? Like, does this sound stupid or not? You'll learn. We're um, just getting started. Yeah. 
But then uh, my partner, Jason, uh, his is Jason underscore Bamf, B-A-M-F underscore Cobalt. Um, he's an awesome guy. Uh, he's, he's not here today. Um, we do a lot of stuff with uh, human trafficking, fighting that. Um, it's how he and I met each other in the first place, and he's actually out of country right now. Wow. Doing some stuff right now. Another reason. Admirable. Yeah. To be following Cobalt. And um, if you guys have any questions uh, about this podcast episode, feel free to drop them in the comments section. We'll get them answered. We'll get them to Aaron. Uh, so he can answer those as well. And then uh, CobaltConnects.com, right? Yes. Go check out their products. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely. Lots more to come. Yeah. Okay. Lots more. Thanks again for sticking with us and have a nice rest of the week. Huh? Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. No, yeah. thanks for being on. It was awesome. Be productive this week. See you guys. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with all your home slicers.